So recently I purchased this Intel NUC on eBay. And the reason I bought it was because I wanted a OBS computer, a dedicated encoding PC to use for my channel. I thought, you know, being a Core i5 would be no problem, but unfortunately this thing chokes when I try to have it encode 1080p. I was actually kind of surprised. Who knew something as simple as 1080p would be a problem for encoding on um, an i5, even if it is a lower powered i5, but you know, it is what it is. I ended up going a different direction with the um, encoding PC. So I thought about taking this back and putting it on eBay and just kind of getting my money back. But then I figured, you know, this would probably make one heck of of a retro gaming computer because let's face it it you know raspberry pi that's often used for you know playing emulators and roms and things and it works pretty well but this thing definitely has more horsepower than a raspberry pi i think the performance is going to be great now i love retro games so anytime i can make a video about retro gaming I'm definitely going to jump at the opportunity to do so. I recently created a video showing how to use my favorite Linux distribution, RetroPie, as more of an application, and then I showed you how to install it on a standard Ubuntu install where you can click on an icon and then bring up Emulation Station, play your ROMs. But I actually think it might be even cooler to have a dedicated computer for this job. So again, this is an Intel NUC. And if you have a desktop laying around, you could probably use that. The only requirement is that you have an HDMI port, which this has. And what I'm gonna do in this video is do this a little bit differently than before. Again, in that video, I showed you how to basically make RetroPie an application. But this time around, I have Ubuntu Minimal flashed on this flash drive right here. If you didn't already know, Ubuntu Minimal is a mini ISO, about, I don't know, 50, 60 megabytes or something like that and you can use it to install a very lightweight Ubuntu installation. Once you get it installed with the minimal version, you get basically just the command line. There's no desktop environment. I mean, obviously you can choose one during the install, but we're not going to do that. We're going to basically get a very minimal installation and then install RetroPie on it so that way we can have basically what is essentially RetroPie as you would have on a Raspberry Pi but on an x86 PC. Now, I know that there are flavors or you know other versions of RetroPie or Emulation Station. Um, I forgot the name of them that you can install that basically do all of this for you. But from my standpoint, RetroPie has always worked very well for me. So even though we're going through a few extra steps, I really believe that this is the best way to do it. And I'm going to show you the process in this video. I'm going to plug in HDMI to this Intel NUC. We're gonna capture directly off of that, so no virtual machines. And then I'm going to show you the process of building it from nothing all the way up to a retro gaming computer. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in the HDMI. Plug in the flash drive, power cable. I'm gonna go grab a keyboard and we'll be ready to go. So here I am on the Ubuntu minimal splash screen that shows up when you first boot from your flash drive. So if you don't already know where to get that ISO, then I'll go ahead and show you right now. So here I am on the Ubuntu website. I am on the page where you can download the minimal CD. The URL is this one right here. I'll have a link in the description below. But you simply scroll down and you'll see some options for download. We are going to use Ubuntu 1804 Bionic Beaver. So go ahead and download this one and write it to a flash drive. If you don't already know how to create a bootable flash drive with a Linux ISO, I have a video that shows you how to do that already on my channel. And then once you boot from it, again, you'll see this screen right here, and then we're going to press enter for install. So now we are in the Ubuntu minimal installer. I'm going to go through this relatively quickly because I have a video that basically goes over this in a little bit more detail. So check that one out if you need a more thorough walkthrough, but I'm basically going to select the defaults for pretty much almost everything. So if there's anything of special interest, I'll let you know. So enter for language, again for location, and for the keyboard layout, I'm just going to keep it simple. Again, if yours is different, go ahead and select whatever that happens to be. 
as you just saw, it was able to get an IP address off camera. I did actually plug in an ethernet cable to keep it simple. Now for the host name, you can call this whatever you'd like. I'm going to call mine RetroPie PC. I guess that's good enough. For the name, you could basically put whatever you'd like, but whenever you go through the network to add ROMs to it, this is the name you'll see it on the network as. So you might as well make sure that it is identifiable as your RetroPie machine. So I'll press enter. And again, just the defaults for the repository. Usually that's a good choice. For the user, I'm also going to keep that simple as well. Password, again. Time zone was automatically detected properly. Enter. Lots of questions, but we're getting through it. So I already have a Linux distro set up on this NVMe drive that's inside my NUC. I'm just going to use the entire disk and wipe it out. So if you are following along, I'm assuming you've already backed up everything that, that is important to you. So enter on that and I'll choose the NVMe drive and it's going to create a single partition for me. So that's fine. And I'll go ahead and let this install. All right, so now that that's out of the way, I'm just going to choose the default of no automatic updates. So now we get to choose which components we would like to make a part of our installation, but I wanna keep this minimal, so I'll choose as few as possible. One thing that is very useful is gonna be Samba. So I just use the arrow keys and then I'll just press space to put a star in there. Samba will allow us to use the network to add ROMs to our device, which will just make things a lot easier. Now, if I scroll all the way down, we have an option here for open SSH server. That's optional. I think it's a good idea because if you have another Linux computer, you can use SCP to add ROMs to it. You can also SSH into your device so that way you can manage it from the command line, but that's up to you. And then I'll press tab and then go to continue and press enter. Now it's going to install those two selections that I've made. Go ahead and fast forward this. So I'm going to just say yes by pressing enter. And you want to be very careful here because you do need to choose the correct device or your machine will not boot. You want to choose your actual hard drive. So you can see here I have a selection for my USB. This is what I'm installing it from. That's not the correct choice. We want to choose our hard drive, whatever that happens to be. And in my case, it's this one right here. So I'll choose that and press enter. And then defaults again, enter. And installation is complete. It's gonna go ahead and reboot. Now the text is really small, so I'm going to go ahead and log in with the user that I created during installation, and then the password, and we are logged in. As you can see, we just have a command line right now. We have no graphical user interface or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and increase the font size so that way you can actually see it. And then we're gonna go ahead and proceed to install RetroPie. Okay, so I think that font size should be good for pretty much everybody. Just wanna make sure that no one has to squint to see what I'm about to do. So. We are in my home directory right now, and we need to have a place 
to put RetroPie. We are going to download the RetroPie setup script from GitHub, and then we're going to use that to get this installed. So what we'll do is create a directory. I'll call mine git, just a conveniently named place to put repositories. CD inside there, and of course it's empty. So we are good to go to go ahead and get started. But first of all, we want to make sure that we are completely up to date with all of the distribution updates. Now, if you're following along with me and you use the Ubuntu minimal image like I have, then you should be up to date. But just in case, let's go ahead and run sudo apt update and an sudo apt dist hyphen upgrade, just like that, password, it shouldn't find anything, but let's see. Just as I thought, everything is up to date. I mean, I just installed it and the minimal image does pull everything off the internet, so very unlikely, but it is a good idea just to make sure you're up to date. Now we're going to need to install some prerequisite required packages. So we'll do sudo apt install. We need git itself, because if we don't have that, then we can't use git dialog and unzip and xml starlet and then enter have a fast connection so this should happen pretty quickly and there we go type which git you can see that git is now something that we can use so now we can actually go ahead and clone the RetroPie setup script repository. So what we're gonna do is type this, git clone. We'll do a depth of one. And then the URL of the git repository we want to pull down, which is going to be this one. And you know, just go ahead and pause the screen if you need to, jot this down, but I'm gonna go ahead and press enter. And as you can see, that happened pretty quickly. Now inside our git directory, we have a new directory. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in there. And inside that directory, we have a bunch of stuff here. But specifically, what we are interested in is gonna be this guy right here, the RetroPie setup script. So we'll run it with root privileges by using sudo and then a dot forward slash and then the name of that file right there. And we'll press enter. Installing some additional packages that it needs. And we get this disclaimer right here, just reminding everyone that uh, the intent is not to have you sell pre-made RetroPie hardware. Don't do that, but for personal use, that's fine. So I'll just hit enter. And then we get this menu right here, which we will use to go through the process. Now, the first option is actually the one we want. Now, before I continue, I do want to mention that even after we're done with this, you shouldn't delete the repository that we downloaded because this RetroPie setup script can be used at any time to perform other tasks that you might need. So you definitely want to keep this one around. But for right now, we need to do a basic install. That's going to go ahead and get everything done for us. So I'm just going to press enter. It says, are you sure you want to do a basic install? Why, yes, yes I do. So I just hit the left arrow, I'll select yes by pressing enter. And here it goes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let this continue and then I will be back once it's finished. Okay, so once the process is complete, the RetroPie setup script will take you back to the main menu here. So what I'm gonna do is exit out and now we're back on the shell of our RetroPie PC. So RetroPie is set up at this point, but there's actually more things that we need to do in order to make this actually work. Now one thing we can knock out actually is just setting up Samba. This is optional, but highly recommended because it makes it very easy to add ROMs to your RetroPie. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Now, during the installation, I did choose to install Samba. So that should already be on your system. So if you go to Etsy Samba and list storage, and we can see the default file, config file smb.conf is there. You can check the status with systemctl status smbd. 
and we can see that it is active and running. Now by default, the Samba configuration is probably not going to work very well. I'm going to give you guys what I think is the simplest configuration you can possibly get. So again, we have this smb.conf file. So what I'm going to do is move it to a new name. So sudo move or mv smb.conf and we're just going to do, you can name it whatever you want. We basically just don't want to delete it because there could be some useful examples in there if we need them later. And my password. And we can see that we did move that into a new name. So we're going to need to create a custom config file. Don't worry, it's going to be easy. So we'll do sudo nano smb.conf and then enter. And it's a new file, again, because we moved it to a new name. So what I'm going to do here is paste the contents of the new file right in here. So here I have a config file for Samba that's about as easy as it can get. So we just have a global section right here and we're creating a server string which is just like a description. I put RetroPie Gaming Console. You can put whatever you'd like there. For workgroup, name it whatever you'd like. If you have other Windows computers that use a specific workgroup, just use that. And then the rest of the configuration without getting into too much detail has to do with passwordless access. We just want to be able to log right into the RetroPie and dump ROMs right in there without any authentication. This is very insecure, but I'm sure you're not making your RetroPie publicly available anyway. And then we have the name resolve order. But the last line is especially important here because we are going to include a different file because if you notice, there's a global section, there's no shares listed here because I like to put shares in their own file. So basically I'm including that at the last line. We haven't created that yet, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. But first we need to save the file. So I'll do Control O, Enter, and then Control X to exit out. So now we need to create the other file. So we're gonna do sudo nano smb shared.conf and again, we are in the slash Etsy slash Samba directory. So I'm going to press enter. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste the contents of this file in here. And here it is. Here's the SMB shared config file. Just to step you through this real quick, here at the first line, this is a stanza that just marks the beginning of a section. And I'm naming the share RetroPie. The path is going to be this one right here. I just have it as my home directory and then the RetroPie folder that's underneath that. And then we have my user account again in two more lines here. We're just forcing that user. Now, whatever your user account is, you're going to want to change that on each line that you see it. It's uh, listed three times here. So make sure you do change that to be the proper user account. So we have my user listed here here and here, so you'll just change that to whatever yours is. The rest of it though, you should be able to keep it the same. We're basically forcing read and write access to virtually everybody. We're making it public and writable. So this will allow anonymous access if you are using Windows. So that way you could choose that. If it does ask you for a password, you shouldn't actually need to put that in. You should be able to choose anonymous. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this file. Control O, Enter, and then Control X. And then we're back here at the command line. Okay, so if all goes well, we should be able to restart Samba. And as long as it doesn't complain, we should have a share that we can add our ROMs to. Let's see if that does work. So sudo systemctl restart smbd and press enter. Okay, we didn't get any errors there, but we just wanna make double sure. So let's just check the status of it make sure that we don't see any problems there. And despite the hideous colored text right here, it's active and running. It should, it should actually be working. So cue to get out of here. And let's go ahead and test this. If you are using Windows, you should be able to do backslash, backslash, IP address. So whatever your IP address of your RetroPie PC is, slash share name. So it might look something like this. I'm just making up a random IP address here. It'll look something like that. Yours will definitely vary. You should be able to put that in your Windows File Manager and it should be able to get to the share. Now I'm gonna to switch to my Ubuntu PC right now. So I'll show you what that looks like if you are doing this from a Linux machine. 
So here on my Ubuntu install, I'm just gonna open my file manager. We should be able to go to other locations here at the bottom. And in my case, it already scanned. So we do see RetroPie PC is already listed here. If you need to, you could put the server address here. You shouldn't have to do that because if everything is working properly and your workstation, laptop, desktop, whatever you have is on the same network subnet as your RetroPie PC, it should just show up. So I'll go ahead and double click on this. And we see the RetroPie share right here. I'm going to connect as anonymous. And we can see the BIOS, RetroPie menu, and ROMs folder. So if you have some games you want to run that require a special BIOS, you, you'll put them here. And then if you have some ROMs, which you'll pro probably need anyway, you go in here and then you put the ROMs in the associated folder for the console the ROMs are for. And that's basically about it. So with that out of the way, I'll go ahead and switch back over to the RetroPie PC and we'll continue the setup. So now what we need to do is make sure we have the correct video driver for our system. One easy way we can do that is by installing this package, sudo apt install ubuntu drivers common. Press enter. It's gonna go ahead and install that as some prerequisite packages, so it should be pretty quick. And then I'll clear the screen here. Then we can do sudo ubuntu drivers auto install, press enter. In my case, it says no drivers found for installation. Now the thing is, I have integrated graphics here. It's just an Intel card, so that's okay. But if you had something like an NVIDIA card in your system, then you should have seen some kind of output that will basically say that it's going to be installing NVIDIA, which will get that going for you. So your results may vary depending on what kind of card you have. So now what we're gonna do is install a few packages just to automate the process of logging in and starting RetroPie. So we're going to install a login manager just to configure auto login. It's just the easiest way to do it. There's other ways to do it, but this way works just fine. And then we're going to install OpenBox, which is a window manager, not a desktop environment, which is why I chose it. I don't want anything heavy running on the system. So we'll do sudo apt install light dm and open box and press enter it's going to install a bunch of packages but that's okay that's what we need in order to get this going so we're going to go ahead and accept the default here by pressing enter Okay, so those packages are done installing, so that's good. Next, we need to make sure that the system automatically logs on. So to do that, we're going to configure LightDM. So with sudo, we're gonna do this, sudo nano slash etsy lightdm lightdm.conf and enter. And this file is blank, that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and create it. So I'm going to paste everything in and then you'll have an opportunity to paste that into yours as well. So now we have the file right here and you'll need to customize yours a bit. Make sure you have the proper user account right here. And I'm selecting open box because I want that to be the session that comes up automatically. So control O, enter, and then control X and we should be good to go. Now that we have OpenBox installed, we can actually create an auto start file that OpenBox will respect and launch as soon as you log in that will start Emulation Station. Now this is extremely easy to do. So right now I am in the RetroPie setup directory. Again, this is the Git repository that we downloaded earlier. And what I wanna do is run The same setup script again, because like I mentioned earlier in the video, you wanna keep this script around because even after you finish installing it, you'll use this script to make changes, which is exactly what I'm going to do right now. 
Now inside this little menu here, what we want to do is go down to configuration slash tools. And we're going to go down here to auto start and press enter. And it defaults to being disabled, but if you press enter, it should enable it. And now it's set to auto start after login, just as it says. We can cancel out of here now, and then we can exit the menu. So now when we reboot our computer, it should automatically start. We should be good to go. So there's something that we do need to do to kind of automate the process a little bit further because when you are in emulation station and you want to reboot for example through that menu in order for that to work you have to actually configure sudo to not ask for a password so i'm going to show you guys how to do that right now so what you're going to do is editor equals nano sudo by sudo just like that and then press enter type in your password and now you're in the uh, sudoers file, but you have to be extremely careful with this because if you make a mistake, then you know you basically have locked yourself out of making changes on your system. Not a good thing. So what you wanna do is scroll down here and we're gonna go up here. Uh, we're gonna ignore the line that says root, but I'm gonna add a new line here. I'm going to type in my username. So you just type whatever yours happens to be. Tab over here, all equals all. Then I end the parentheses right there. No pass WD, it's abbreviated. Make sure you take note of that. Colon all. And just make sure that you did this right. Vaisudu should yell at you if you've made a mistake, but it, it's always possible that it may not. So as long as you have it exactly as I have it here, you should be good to go. So control O, enter, and then control X. So as you saw, we just edited the sudo permissions by using the vi sudo command. We added our user account with no password, so that way we can basically reboot the computer without a password. Otherwise, when you choose the reboot option in Emulation Station, it's not actually going to work. But it's actually still not going to work because as you probably saw, when we're editing the sudoers file with vi sudo, the sudo group has access to sudo as well and our user is a member of that group. For example, if I execute the groups command, you can see all the groups my user is a member of. Why does this matter? Well, as you can see right here, my user is a member of the sudo group that will override the fact that we added our user to that file manually with no passwd for no password. So we are going to want to remove our user from the sudo group so that way the no pass WD will take effect and we can reboot our emulation station PC without a password. To do that is actually pretty easy. We'll do sudo g pass WD dash D for delete. The user we want to edit, which is mine, substitute that for yours. And then the group we want to make sure that user is not a member of, in this case, sudo. Put in the password. And there we go. And to verify that, we could do groups and then the name of the user, press enter. And we'll see that sudo is not on the list. So that means we should be able to use the reboot or restart options in emulation station. And those options should work. However, we might need to reboot our PC in order for that to take effect. So it may not work until the next time you go to try it. So moment of truth. Is it going to work? Did we do everything correct? Well, let's find out. I'm going to go ahead and reboot this and then I'll show you what happens. You're going to see it for yourself. Let's see if Emulation Station will automatically start up when we reboot. As you can see, we actually did boot into Emulation Station. We are now ready to go. So I have this controller right here is just a cheap iBuffalo controller or whatever that brand name is. Yeah, iBuffalo, whatever. It looks like a Super Nintendo controller. Feels pretty good. It's a pretty good one. I have a link to this in my Amazon affiliate store along with some other game pads that work. But basically, just get a USB game pad. Doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. Pretty long cable here. Let's get this plugged in. And then we're going to go ahead and configure the controller. So just as it says here, I'm going to hold a button on the gamepad to start configuring it. And here we can go ahead and start configuring everything. And there is some documentation if you are curious 
what you know which buttons to use for which but it's pretty self-explanatory especially if you have a super nintendo styled controller like i have and i'm going to go ahead and just press every button that it says if you are using a super nintendo controller like me it's pretty self-explanatory but they have documentation for other controller types as well on their github site a link to the documentation will be in the description below so i'll go ahead and walk through this And in my case, I've run out of buttons. This is essentially L2 or R2, basically. You can skip an item if you've run out of buttons like me by just holding any button. And I'm gonna basically repeat that for each of these that don't apply to the controller that I have. Now this last one right here, hotkey enable, don't skip this one because this is important because you have to have a way to get out of an emulator when you're done playing a game and if you don't have a key that you would like to designate for this, you can just press what is basically the select button, which will enable you to be able to do select and start at the same time to exit a game. So I'll just press select, and then I'll choose okay by pressing A on the gamepad. Now we have RetroPie installed. I have not added any ROMs yet, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and do that off camera by just adding them to the folder via Samba like I showed you guys. And then when I reboot the system, it'll automatically detect any games that I've added and will add them to the menu. So as you can see here, I have activated the Mega Drive section and I've done that by just simply adding ROMs to that folder. Now, if you are in the United States, the Mega Drive and Sega Genesis is the same thing, if you didn't already know that, just different names in different regions. But you can actually customize the branding to be the Sega Genesis branding should you need to do so. The information on how to do that is in the RetroPie documentation. But I have added some games here. As you can see, I just basically copied over some Sonic games. So I'm going to go ahead and just launch Sonic 3 so you can see that this does indeed work. Sega. In case you didn't already know, it's made by Sega. And this is actually my favorite Sonic game in the series. I don't really think it gets enough attention, the attention that it definitely deserves. It's a great game. As you can see, it is actually working. We are able to play Sonic 3 or whatever other ROMs we may be loading onto this thing. And the performance is just as good as you would expect. In the future, I hope to try some more systems like N64 or Dreamcast to show you guys what that looks like. And once I have that done, I will do a follow-up video so you can see what kind of performance to expect on the systems that are harder to emulate. So there you go guys, that was my video on setting up RetroPie on a dedicated PC. In my case, it was an Intel NUC, but uh, maybe you have something else. How did that process work out for you? Let me know in the comments down below, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for checking out my video, I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button, and if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books, and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux-compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.